this is probably goodness knows how many videos you've seen of this and this has been ongoing for over a year could possibly be two years and um, I'm determined to make headway with it it's not that I don't like working on it I love working on it I mean how could I not love working on this um, I adore it um, but I get I do my classes I get distracted I go off on a tangent and this seems to get left and I, I really want to make a conscious effort to get this finished so that's why I'm working on it now in class and the embroidered pockets class in tandem with the other pockets I'm making with them and um, because really essentially this is going to be a human sized pocket so I just wanted to refresh you about it really because you might see quite a bit of it um, coming up over the next well when I come back I'm going to Glastonbury so when I come back from there you may see quite a bit of this so I just wanted to I don't know just really talk to you about the surface I mean that panel I think it's beautiful. I mean, I'm open to everything being debated about this. If I say something's beautiful and you disagree, that's fine. But I think this is absolutely stunning. And then we've got a more square panel here. It's just like patches, things patched on the surface. And then we've got, there's so many panels. Another one over here that's got basic applique with scraps of lace. Sorry, you can't really see that, can you? basic applique with scraps of lace and then some more defined applique some cross stitch over here samples of stitches uh, bullion knots french knots in clusters again there french knots bullion knots in clusters a little patch there of cross stitch um, if you can see that and then more applique here applique on applique over here it's falling off the table it's so big but i don't know if you remembered it's also being, being patched together. So what's happening is a panel of embroidered silk next to a panel of pleated muslin and each panel of pleated muslin has one of these and that's to kind of reinforce the binding aspect of this because this to me is going to be human sized like sleeping bag and metaphorically I'm going to put my kids in here to keep them safe. Um, it's not going to be like six foot long it's probably going to be about five foot long um, and I'm sure my kids would object to being put in here but in my head that's what it is so I am making quite good progress with it um, another panel is that the panel I showed you before no see that's another one I mean and then the seams I'm joining all these pieces together and I'm mostly using what I call a little stab stitch but then I'm coming back and adding another row of some kind of adornment on here and um, so hopefully this is going to get big enough soon to be backed and lined and have a huge zipper put in the back and um, that's another tab that recently went on in class and that still needs something on the other side to join it onto it's so heavy it's falling off the table as I'm moving it about so basically I just wanted you to know, I know I say it a lot, but I wanted you to know I'm not idle and I know you don't think I'm idle but I don't want you to think I'm just repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. Maybe I am, you tell me. Um, but these are kind of things that are going on in the background um, and I just wanted to share that with you because I mean I've got it out this morning because I'm making a video with it for class and I just love to handle it and I love to talk about it. Um, and I think it's okay to like your own work. A lot of people think they have to denigrate their own work. You really don't. It's okay to love your own work. What's wrong with loving your own work when you've invested time in it? When you've invested, you know, a little bit of yourself into everything? Because I put a little bit of myself into everything I make. Um, so it's fine to love your own work. It took me a long time to realise that. And it's not a case of boasting or bragging. It's a case of having a satisfaction with what you're spending your time doing. And to me, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I think a lot of people in the world could do with being allowed to be satisfied with what they're doing and what they're achieving every day. So, you know, it's a philo I'm a philosopher now. Not really, but it's just how I feel. Um, I love this. I love, love, love it. There's no money in the world that could make me part with this um, when it's finished at any stage of this because I really have a deep love for it and I know that a lot of you who are watching this video who are regular visitors to my blog feel the same about your work 
And it's okay to feel like that. It's okay. You're not saying, look at me, I'm amazing. I'm the best embroiderer in the world. Because I would never say that. I know a lot of things on here wouldn't pass muster with couture houses. Um, but for me, to achieve this, personally, it makes me just makes me satisfied with what I'm doing makes me happy with what I'm doing and you're allowed to do that too and it turned into a lecture and it wasn't supposed to be one there's another tab there so this like I said the pleated muslin is binding holding things precious close to you keeping them safe wrapping them up and this is to reinforce that sense of binding um, there's another one here I've still got quite a few of those to make there's another one there and they've got just as much adornment on them as the panels because every time I put a stitch in here it's not for me, it's for my kids and it's a recognition that time consuming and laborious um, when you're doing it for somebody or something that you love it really isn't a negative like it can time consuming, laborious especially has negative connotations doesn't it well not for me not with this okay so i just wanted to give you a quick tour around the body bag i hope you don't mind <laughs> 